Hey guys, it's Giselle here and I'm an ultrasound technologist, aka sonographer out here in Las Vegas. And today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to do a vascular ultrasound on the legs to check for blood clots. In ultrasound, we call blood clots deep vein thrombosis or DVT. And so these are typically the reasons why we're scanning the legs and the veins to check for blood clots. But that's not the only thing. We can also see if there's any fluid collections, any lymph nodes, any abnormalities within the lower leg areas. And typically patients come into the hospital or into the clinic setting, which is a doctor's office or an outpatient office to see if there is any blood clots or anything going on because they're having redness to the legs, swelling, pain, shortness of breath, chest pain, or even having a hard time walking. Sometimes they're having warmth in their feet, swelling in their feet, swelling in the calves. They could have elevated blood work, such as elevated D-dimer, which is a laboratory result. And sometimes patients have had prior history of DVTs or blood clots, so they just get them checked because they wanna make sure if it's still there, if it's gone, if the blood thinners are working for them, etc., etc. So today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to do the protocol in a very simple, simplistic, relaxing way. So just sit back, relax, get a drink, make sure you have your pen and paper or your little iPads, notes on your phones, whatever you use nowadays to take some notes and let's just get started into the video. I'm gonna start off with a disclaimer that wherever you work, it's going to be a different protocol. And I say this because each place has a different way that they are examining the patient's legs and so don't be alarmed if you go somewhere and one place does it a certain way and another place does it another way there are typically guidelines to how you're supposed to do these exams but not every place is accredited and so yeah that's just something you have to pay attention to but because i do work in a hospital setting i have also worked in outpatient settings I do have some history and experience of seeing different places do different things and I'm just going to touch on the basics of what essentially we're looking for when we do these ultrasounds in the legs for DVT or blood clots. As you know, I'm already saying a few different words that mean the same thing. In the medical field, there's a lot of different terminology that essentially mean the same thing or they renamed certain structures but a lot of times things don't really change. So you're gonna see on YouTube that there's a lot of videos on how to do these ultrasounds, and yes, they are very helpful, so you should go check them out. I'm just here to kind of explain what I do and what I have seen around the valley. So I touched up on the indications as to why people would get an ultrasound on their legs to check for blood clots, but also there's another reason that I didn't touch up on which is basically they had a long period of time of traveling so in a car or in a plane because i work in las vegas we do get a lot of patients who had just stepped off a plane or just came in from traveling very far and had very swollen legs so we would do an ultrasound to check for blood clots because the doctors are concerned whether there are blood clots that are formed in those legs or not worst case scenario most of the time the patient may have a blood clot, they will put them on blood thinners, but a majority of the time, I don't really see blood clots. I get a lot of negative tests. We're gonna start with the top of the very leg. We start at the very top of the groin, and we're looking at the common femoral, or femoral, as some people may say it, but the common femoral area where it meets the greater saphenous vein. And at this point in junction where the common femoral vein meets the greater saphenous vein, we check them out, make sure that there's nothing going on in there. You see a black and white picture of it, and we start from the top going down to the bottom of the leg to do some compressions to check to see if there's any blood clots throughout the leg because you wanna make sure that you're not augmenting a blood clot and basically dislodging it from one part of the leg to go all the way back up to the chest. So. You want to be sure that before you augment, you are checking the entire leg to make sure that there's no blood clots in there. But once you get through that process, you're going to take three or four different types of images for every single segment that you are looking at. You're going to take one black and white picture with a compression. It's a dual screen, so you're going to have one normal open vessel on one side, and then you're going to have one compressed 
vessel on the other side. It's a dual screen image. And you're gonna start at the common femoral junction with a greater saphenous vein. And you're gonna go down the leg. You're gonna take a black and white picture, a color picture, and a Doppler picture. Some places do a black and white in sagittal and transverse all the way through. Some people do not, so it just depends on where you're working. But what I do is I have four images. I'll have the compression picture in black and white. I'll have a sagittal in black and white. I'll have a color sagittal Doppler, and that takes four images. So I start all the way up there at the top. I compress down the leg. As you go down the common femoral leg, it turns into the femoral vein or some people would say SFV for superficial femoral vein and where I like to get the proximate and distal or upper mid and lower portions of the leg I like to get the bifurcation at the proximal portion of the femoral vein so I'll go from the common femoral vein to the superficial femoral vein proximal where it splits at the bifurcation of the deep vein or profunda. So this sounds crazy because there's all these different words, but as you guys know already when you're going through school, you're gonna know these anatomy terms. So I go from the prox or upper portion, the mid portion and the distal portion, and I compress those down. I do the sagittal in black and white, and I do the color and Doppler all the way down the leg until I get to the popliteal behind the knee. So at the popliteal behind the knee, I'll do the same thing, the compression picture, color Doppler, and I will make sure everything looks good. I'll go to the perineals. Some people say peroneal, whatever you wanna call it, perineal, peroneal. You go there, you make sure there's no blood clots in there as well. You compress down the calf, and then go all the way down to the posterior tibial veins, making sure that there's no blood clots in there, that everything's compressing, that there is adequate blood flow and your augmentation. I am making sure that these vessels are clear and open so you can see if there's any artifact, I make sure I clear that out with a TGC. And if there's any abnormalities, I will document them. So if there is a blood clot, which is usually echogenic thrombus or if you're not in a program yet, it's kind of like a little bit more brighter in the vessel. I will measure that thrombus in transverse, show it in sagittal, and then put color on it and Doppler as well, but I will not augment. So if I do find a blood clot or a DVT, I will not augment. And that's because you do not want to dislodge the blood clot. But I have seen in the Discord channel that some people do not augment at all. Let's hear what you guys have to say. Comment down below on how your protocol is and if your place of work does things differently than what I just explained. And hopefully it was a pretty quick and easy protocol for you guys to understand. This is mostly for those of you guys who already are out of clinicals or in clinicals and just needed a little bit more of an explanation of how I do my protocol. But yeah, we just wanna make sure that there's no blood clots in there. If there are any lymph nodes or abnormalities, I will measure those in sagittal and transverse. And if there is something on one leg and I don't see it on the other leg, I make sure that I have comparison areas. For example, if somebody complains about having their anterior knee being swollen, I will scan the right side where they're complaining and then I will do a contralateral or opposite side photo of the left side to prove that there's nothing there or to compare that maybe there is something there as well. I have found that doing an ultrasound on the legs of the veins was really the very first time I really truly understood how to do ultrasound when I was in lab and I feel like this is one of my favorite exams because it's pretty straightforward. There's either a blood clot or there's not a blood clot. Now remember, there's two types of blood clots. There's one that is non-occlusive, meaning blood flow still goes through, and there's one that's occlusive, meaning no blood flow goes through. And when there's occlusive thrombus, you still wanna make sure you're doing your color and your Dopplers and showing and proving that there is an occlusive thrombus in there. Because remember, after we do our ultrasounds, we write our paperwork, and our paperwork is the one thing that the doctors are looking for to make sure that you know what you're seeing and you know how to document whether there's a blood clot or not, whether there's a lymph node or any abnormalities. 
If this was helpful for you guys, please let me know, comment down below how I can change it up for you. If you guys would like me to do any other protocols and whatever else you guys will find helpful for your journey on becoming the best sonographer that you can be. A few things that you're gonna have to look out for with this exam is that patients are going to be in pain and they're not gonna like this test because you have to compress. So always do your best to talk to these patients like how you would want yourself to be spoken to and be kind, be gentle, be nice to them and just let them know you're not there to hurt them but you're just there to help them and do your best to get through these exams because they are tough to do especially in the hospital setting. But if there's anything else I can help you guys with, please comment down below, let me know and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Thank you.